What's up guys, it's Tom with Varus Engineering and today we're going to be going over the installation of our front splitter kit for the 991.1 GT3. So, as well as being the perfect complement to our UCW rear wing kit, the front splitter that we offer for the 991.1 GT3 will increase the front end downforce and ultimately help you chase those faster lap times. So, that being said, Let's jump right into the install. All right, tools we need to install the splitter. Start with a drill. We need a uh, 5 32 drill bit, a 3 8 drill bit, and also a 13 16 drill bit. Uh, so I have this step bit here for drilling uh, the bumper. Uh, we need a ratchet, an extension, 10 millimeter socket or wrench, T20, uh, T30 Torx, socket or wrench, T25 Torx socket or wrench, 13 millimeter socket and a swivel adapter or universal adapter, or you can have a 13 millimeter swivel socket, which will help greatly. Two, two and a half millimeter Allen key or socket, four millimeter Allen key or socket. I have both, uh, preferably both would be give you more options here. Five millimeter Allen key or socket, flat tip screwdriver and a 9 16th wrench. Here are the components that you will receive. Obviously a splitter blade. You're going to receive two of these 270 millimeter adjustable support rods. Oops. Four pre-drilled clevises. You're gonna receive two of the main splitter brackets. One cross brace with the cross brace brackets. Uh, three of them are the same. We're also going to receive the center chassis bracket here and the side chassis brackets here. Quick note on the side chassis brackets, they will be bolted to the main chassis bracket or main splitter bracket, just like this, just so you guys have an idea. You're also going to receive three air dam brackets, two side air dam brackets and one center air dam bracket. All right, so first step uh, that we need to do uh, is basically remove the front bumper. And in order to do that, we're gonna remove all of these trunk trims or frunk trims first, just by popping them up. Take the rear center off first, and then go ahead and pop the sides off. Um, you'll have to release some kind of uh, clip-like things that kind of go into the fender towards the rear. And then up here, you got another clip going down. As you get towards the front, there is a clip going down and then you will need to pull rearward to release the last clip. All right, so now we have all this exposed. We're gonna take these T30 bolts, one, two, three in the front. Uh, out. Next, we're gonna grab a hook pick like this, and we need to pull the, uh, I don't know what you wanna call them, the uh, these slide tabs for the bumper attachment to the fender. Basically, you're gonna pull towards the inside of the car, and then this whole retainer pops out. Uh, and uh, also, yeah, so that's the little hole right there that the hook would go into. All right, next we need to uh, basically remove um, the bumper mounting provisions for the sides. And so to do that, go ahead and remove the lower splash shield that kind of sits underneath uh, this portion of the bumper, uh, T25, T30 bolts. Then you have two T25 bolts along the side, one here and one approximately here. Uh, there's also another I believe T25 bolt that is holding uh, this black trim piece uh, to the um, rat support. Uh, so go ahead and remove all of them. And then you will have the fender liner kind of freed up so that you can, a lot of rocks, kind of peel it back just a little. Uh, and then that will expose the T30 bolt that's going upwards right here in the corner. Uh, so we'll go ahead and remove that as well and that should free the bumper up uh, enough to pull it away from the car a little bit. All right, as you're pulling the bumper off, 
make sure you disconnect the electrical connector. There's one electrical connector on each side and on the driver's side, you will need to disconnect the headlight washer hose. All right, next what we wanna do is assemble the two splitter halves. And in order to do that, we need to line up these kind of puzzle piece sections and grab yourself a mallet or a hammer and just tap them into place. Just like that. Okay. Now what we want to do is grab our 12 millimeter M4 button head cap screws and small diameter washers. And we want to push them up through the pocket that is located in the middle of the uh, kind of puzzle piece fingers. Then we're going to grab our large diameter M4 washer, place that on the top side of the splitter, and then uh, we're going to put the M4 nylock on top of that. So we're going to repeat that for the, the uh, second set of puzzle fingers, and then we're basically going to snug those guys up. They're M4s, so you don't need to go nuts. Just maybe about a half a turn past bottom, and that will be fine. Okay, for the GT3 models, we cannot remove this center section, so we need to drill access holes so the bolts can pass through this into the brackets, which will be kind of sitting like, like this. Um, so in order to do that, we're gonna reinstall the bumper back on the car uh, temporarily. Basically just gonna slide it on the bumper uh, or back on the car. We, we need to maybe just put a bolt in to keep it from moving. Um, but before we do that, go ahead and remove these plastic cups. There's three of them, one for each of these kind of uh, rectangular holes. Take them out and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this back on the car. All right, so as I described earlier, uh, I temporarily installed the bumper back onto the car. Uh, I used the, uh, those pull tabs. Um, they do a great job of holding the bumper to the car without having to like mess with any bolts or anything like that. Um, so what I have done here is get the splitter and I've set it up uh, on pole jacks because we have a, we have a lift here. So uh, ultimately this concept is going to be the same no matter uh, how you end up doing it, whether it's pole jacks or a floor jack, or um, if you want to kind of flip the bumper over on a blanket or something like that on the ground. Um, but what you wanna do is center the splitter to the bumper and make sure the gaps uh, are at the uh, end of the splitter. Make sure that it is flush with the uh, plastic cladding or the wheel well on both sides. And then you wanna make sure side to side that the splitter is center to the bumper. Next, we're gonna mark every single hole that goes to the bumper. And then in the next scene, we will drill those holes out and I will describe to you which uh, sizes need to be drilled. All right, grab yourself a half inch drill bit and uh, we're only gonna drill uh, to a half an inch. We're only going to drill the holes that were marked for the, uh, I guess you wanna call it the white section or the, or the painted section of uh, the bumper, uh, not the uh, air dam or the black cladding, the lip, whatever you wanna call it, only the painted section uh, that is basically in the middle here. So now if, uh, if you did decide to put the bumper back on the car uh, and do it this way, then we're gonna go ahead and remove the bumper and we're gonna start bolting up all of the splitter brackets. All right, so grab your two main uh, splitter brackets and we're gonna bolt this L-shaped bracket to the main bracket, just like I have here. The L-shaped bracket should be pointed towards the center of the car. So that'll give you an idea of which one needs to go where. And we're going to use our 20 millimeter button head cap screws with the 12 millimeter washers in the two holes there and torque them to six foot pounds. Go ahead and do that for both of the brackets. And then what we're going to do is remove the outer and the upper um, 13 millimeter flange nut that's holding the pedestrian bar bracket thing uh, from the factory. Again, that's the outer and the top, so that'll go for both sides. And then you'll see how the bracket will bolt directly up to that. Once you have that done, go ahead and torque the 13 millimeter nuts to 13 foot pounds. And uh, we'll go from there. Next, grab your rear um, cross brace. That's the C-shaped bracket. Uh, and you want to install this so that the 
the C is facing towards the front of the car. And we're gonna bolt this to the car by reusing uh, the bumper bolts that were previously here. That's the T30 bolts and that's a weird way to transition that. Uh, the easiest way to recognize them is that they have the shoulders uh, on them. Next, go ahead and install the front cross brace. That is the square tube. Um, and we're going to basically use the 40 millimeter button head cap screws, 12 millimeter washers, and a M6 serrated flange nut. The nut should be on the top. Washer and the button head should be on the bottom. And we're going to use the hole that passes through the, um, the square tube and not the, um, rivet nut that is on the top. So go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna bolt up the three kind of uh, brackets that stick out from there. Same thing, 40 millimeter button head cap screws, 12 millimeter washers, and M6 serrated flange nuts. All right, we need to install the support rods. That means we need to remove the radiator ducts. To remove the radiator ducts, there's a series of retaining claws on the side of the radiator shroud. And all you need to do is kind of pry them open and pull the radiator shroud towards you. For the passenger side like this here, don't forget to disconnect the air temp sensor and there you go. We're gonna repeat the process for the other side and then we need to remove the crash bar. All right, we've got the ducts removed. We need to remove the crash bar. Uh, to do that, we need a 13 millimeter socket. A swivel's probably best. We have three bolts on each side. And go ahead and remove them. Okay, all right, so I've got the crash bar in a vise uh, to kind of help show you guys what's going on. Now we need to take two measurements uh, for the uh, intersecting lines we need in order to get the correct uh, point for drilling the rivet nuts. And in order to do that, we're gonna measure uh, 40 millimeters from this flange surface here. Um, that is the, uh, what I'm pointing at now, not this side, this side, measure 40 millimeters like so. Okay. And then we're going to take our micrometer calipers down to 18 millimeters round about. And you see this lifted edge. Okay. We're going to go off of that surface there and we're going to make a mark along that line as well. Where those two marks intersect is where we're going to drill. Go ahead and center punch that with uh, an automatic center punch or a regular punch. We're gonna drill it to three eighths of an inch so we can accommodate our rivet nuts. So we're gonna do that now. Now, I am going to use this uh, rivet nut tool. You will be provided with this rivet nut tool in the hardware kit. Very simple to use. Thread your rivet nut onto the bolt and then you're going to insert the rivet nut into the hole like so. Hold back, oops, hold back the hex with a 916 wrench, and you're going to turn the Allen bolt with a five millimeter Allen, and you're gonna initially feel some uh, uh, resistance, and then as the rivet nut crushes, the resistance will subside a bit until the very end where you will start to see or feel some pretty significant resistance again, which will kind of imitate you tightening a bolt, essentially. Uh, that's when you'll know to stop and then back the bolt out and you will have an installed rivet nut. Or you can go on Amazon, Harbor Freight, something like that, and buy one of these tools. Uh, they're fairly cheap. But it makes installing the rivet nut that easy. All right, back at the car. Uh, what I've done is uh, temporarily install the clevises to the rivet nuts we installed. 
just uh, a couple minutes ago. And I used the 25 millimeter low profile socket head cap screws. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna temporarily install this back on the car. Okay, back on the alignment dowels. Just gonna put one bolt in on each side. All right, it's important to note that uh, the clevises shouldn't be totally tightened. They just need to be snugged. What we're gonna do is now assemble our tie rod or splitter rod. And uh, essentially what we need to do is make sure we have the correct angle on the clevis so that it can match up with the uh, rod end on the support rod. So uh, let's assemble the splitter rod and then we'll get to doing the adjustment for the clevis. All right, so go ahead and assemble your splitter rod uh, like you see here. Uh, one 230 millimeter rod and one extension. Thread the rod ends on each side. And go ahead and feed this up on the outside of the radiator into the upper clevis that we just installed. And oh, go ahead and install a clevis on the front cross brace with a, another 25 millimeter low profile socket head cap screw. Uh, leave it loose. We basically want to, again, find the correct angle of the clevis. Uh, as you're putting this in, uh, I will say that you probably will have to thread the rod ends in all the way. That's the first thing. The second thing to note is that the uh, support rod is going to be putting some pressure on uh, this, I think it's the rear shroud. Uh, for the center radiator. If you want, you can clearance that. You don't need to, uh, just kind of push it over and it should be fine. But again, if you want to clearance that, that is up to you. So here we have everything lined up. So I got the angles uh, and the clevises lined up correctly now. Uh, so I'm gonna take a marker and I'm just gonna make a mark from the clevis to the center brace and from the clevis to the crash bar. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, same thing for the other side. I'm gonna take the crash bar off and then we're gonna go ahead and lock down the clevises. We're gonna to torque those low profile socket cap screws to six foot pounds. And then we know that they'll be set at the correct angle. Put the crash bar back up and then we can uh, use our through bolts for the rod ends and torque those to six foot pounds as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, we got our splitter ties in. 25 millimeter button head uh, cap screws with 12 millimeter washers on the button head side, serrated M6 serrated flange nut on the other side. Tighten these to six foot pounds. You're gonna do one obviously for each clevis. So that's four in total, two on each side. Uh, once you have those tightened up, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the radiator ducts and then we can go put the bumper on. So the next time I'll see you, the bumper will already be on the car and we're gonna be getting ready to put the splitter up. All right guys. So a quick note about the uh, splitter mounting brackets as you're fitting the bumper up. The brackets should sit above this, uh, I don't know if you wanna call it a flap uh, of the bumper. And essentially, um, because there could be some variation in the age of the vehicles and the bumper, uh, and if you, you know, if you've uh, got a little rash here on the lip or anything like that, maybe you bump the curb. Anyways, uh, because there could be some variation with the splitter ties, what you're able to do is kind of put the bracket assembly in a little bit of tension. And that way you can, you can basically kind of pull the bracket assembly up. And basically what you'll notice is this is kind of uh, at an upward angle and you can basically adjust the bracket assembly so that it is at a more favorable angle uh, that complements this angle here. And uh, basically be able to slide the bumper on a lot easier. Again, if you're having trouble, that's something you can uh, do to help alleviate any of that fitment. Uh, if not, totally disregard and go ahead and just install the bumper. All right, we have the bumper uh, reinstalled. Don't forget to reinstall these lower uh, splash guards that go in front of the wheel well. Um, one little tip is I would leave this rear bolt for the uh, factory uh, lip, if you will, uh, undone so that we can fit our air dam brackets um, in there. So let's get to that. Uh, so on camera here, I'm showing, you can see this guy and this guy, okay? These two bolts are going to bolt 
uh, directly to the lip. And by that, uh, what, I, what I mean by that is that once this is up inside of the air dam, this is gonna cinch them together to the lip. All of the other holes are gonna cinch the bracket to the splitter itself and kind of sandwich the lip to the splitter. Uh, but those two holes are gonna be what holds this to uh, the lip, okay? So take your bracket, uh, you put it right into this uh, black lip, make sure it goes all the way back to the edge of the wheel well. And once you have it up in there, you'll notice that uh, there is a little bit of uh, material overhanging past the lip. And again, that's to uh, pull the lip down against the splitter. If you did not mark these holes on the outer perimeter uh, for the uh, air dam and this particular air dam bracket or lip, uh, go ahead and mark them out now. And then we need to drill them to 530 seconds. All right, so we have all of the holes drilled now. We're gonna go ahead and set this bracket in here like we described earlier. And we're gonna use our 16 millimeter M4 button head cap screws. As well as the large diameter M4 washers that are supplied in the hardware kit. Then we're gonna take a two and a half millimeter Allen. If you're having issues lining up the two bolts, uh, you could always leave, leave them loose before you end up tightening them down. Uh, that way you'll be able to line everything up a lot easier. All right, a last bit of prep work before we put this splitter on the car. I went ahead and put the uh, 40 millimeter button and cap screws on all of these holes. Uh, these are the main mounting holes in the front. The rear ones do not need spacers. So basically we have for the six up front, 18 millimeter washers, uh, 40 millimeter button head cap screws, we put them through. And then we have a combination of two spacers for these six bolts. Uh, to a five millimeter spacer and a seven and a half millimeter spacer. I put a little piece of tape on there to keep them together while I put the push nut on. These outer bolts are going to receive the same uh, 40 millimeter button head cap screws, but they're also going to use, uh, or they're going to use one and a half inch fender washers instead of the 18 millimeter fender washers. And they're only going to use 10 millimeter spacers. All right, so at this point, uh, we wanna put the splitter up on the car. So probably grab a friend to give you a hand. I'm gonna struggle to do this on my own and you guys can uh, feel free to laugh. Uh, so these four rear bolts are going to get 40 millimeter button head cap screws and one and a half inch fender washers. All right, so I got all the bolts up. Obviously the splitter is already up. Um, what I've done is basically um, bottomed out all of the M6 bolts. I'm gonna wait for final torquing until the very end. So I have some uh, maneuverability in the splitter. But now what I want to do is get your 20 millimeter M4 button head cap screws with the uh, M4 washers and begin uh, starting all of the bolts in the hole, the large holes, the counterboard holes, um, to basically cinch down that air dam or bumper lip bracket uh, to pull it down against the splitter. So in order to do that, all of the open holes that don't have anything in them will get a bolt. And then once you have all of those started, go ahead and start removing the studs using a two millimeter Allen and then replacing the studs with um, the M4 bolts and washers with your two and a half millimeter Allen. Once you have everything started, go ahead and torque everything down. The M6 bolts will get torqued to six foot pounds and the bumper bracket or M4 bolts will uh, simply be just snugged up. Okay, so once you have all of those pesky M4 bolts uh, in the air dam brackets, you're done with the install. And as you can see, we are left with a fairly robust <clears throat> front splitter system. Uh, I weigh about 200 pounds. Uh, so yeah, 
That's gonna wrap it up for the install, guys. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, be sure to email us at sales at engineeringcom And then until next time, we'll see you later.